Hello and welcome to the session of ACS Science Talks, Connecting the World Through Science. This is the virtual lecture series, Scientific Talks by Specialists on Specialized Topics for a Specialized Audience. I'm Kunal Gupta and I'm pleased to be your host for today's broadcast of ACS Science Talks. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Abhinav Mohanty and Dr. Kaushik Natarajan, who will be moderating today's live Q&A. With that, let me move on to introducing our speaker for today, uh, Professor Han Ram Lee. Professor Lee holds his PhD degree from the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Postech in Korea in 2009, and had been a postdoctoral scholar in Department of Chemical Engineering at Stanford University from 2010 to 2013. He joined Department of Material Science and Engineering in Incheon National University as an assistant professor in 2013 and was tenured with full professor promotion in 2022. In 2018, he started an appointment of associate editor in Chemistry of Materials published by the American Chemical Society. In addition, he worked at SK Hynix as a consulting professor for the development of new atomic layer deposition or ALD process from 2021 to 2022. Professor Lee's current research interests and topics are focused on understanding and controlling surface chemistry and reactions and applying this knowledge to ALD, that is atomic layer deposition, area selective deposition and atomic layer modulation with atomic level theoretical calculations using density functional theory, DFT, and Monte Carlo simulation. He's organizing an ASD workshop in 2023 and international conference on ALD in 2025 as a chair. So with that, I thank you, Professor Lee, for joining us. The stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you for your great introduction. I'm going to try to share my screen first. Okay. Uh, so everybody can see my screen. If you can see correctly, please type one in the chatting window type one okay good okay okay good so yeah well because this is the, some kind of like a one one direction communication but i already have a lot of experience in this online classroom during the covid 19 pandemic i like this type of the uh communication just by using one or two typing one or two in the chatting room and I thank you for joining this, uh, the free webinar. And then I, it's my honor to share my thoughts and then my knowledge about the recent change of uh, uh, the, the silicon chip industry and then atomic layer deflation. And then today, well, once I get, uh, have the invitation from this ACS, the science talk, I have researched what kind of the topic was handled by the previous uh, speakers. And then some of the speaker, they spoke, they shared their very in-depth knowledge about their research, but some, some professor, they just share just a very brief introduction of their research. I decided what was, uh, I, I thought what was the uh, best topic for the, all of the attendees, which I assume the, all of the, most of the attendees uh, doesn't do not have like a very like in-depth understanding about the, my research, like for example, like atomic layer definition or some surface science or surface chemistry or something like that. But they they definitely have the very basic knowledge about the very basic science. So I decided to introduce what's the uh, the recent change, why the USA want to keep their the silicon the fabrication facility inside their country. And why the China want to buy the more the semiconductor fabrication tool for their country. So uh, this is the uh, the one of the really important uh, the change in this uh, time period. So so today topic today's the title of my talk is the industrial ecosystem or the silicon chips and atomic layer deposition as a key nanofabrication technology. These slides was built based on the, my recent uh, the review and an editorial. So I share the information about the, my article, review article and editorial article in the end of this talk. And then you can read uh, for, more in, uh, for more information. Okay, so let me 
Well, my name is Hamboram Lee, and then my first name is Hamboram, or sometimes my, my, my friends call me Boram instead of Hamboram because this sounds like a very long. And my last name is Lee, a professor in the material science and engineering in International University in South Korea. And also I've been working in uh, the chemistry material as an associate editor from the 2018. And also my research was pretty much focused on the net, uh, silicon device fabrication. Because of that, I was appointed from 2021 to 2022 as a consulting professor in the SK Hynix, which is the uh, one of the largest the memory, silicon memory device uh, fabrication company all over the world. And I was the uh, one of the community members for the Korean conference on semiconductor. Also my research is atomic layer diffusion. And I will be a chair for the 2025 uh, ALD, uh, international conference on ALD. So this is my research group. I love my student at postdoc, and then we recently got the uh, really great dinner in the uh, uh, the Chinese restaurant, which is the uh, the lamb, and they really like that one. And then my research group is composed of a very internationalized the group members, uh, Koreans, and Pakistani, and uh, Indians, and uh, Vietnamese, and a uh, Brazilian, and then. Uh, so my research group uh, very focused on the uh, fundamental understanding of the surface science and surface chemistry. Actually, so I'm really like uh, using computer. I'm a computer person, and but I'm also my professional field. I was I have been an uh, experimentalist in the last almost the twenty years. So I really want to apply the, uh, the computer research for my research. So basically, all of the, my students is doing experiment, like for example, automated like diffusion or some silicon device fabrication process or something like that. But those uh, the experiments is based on the understanding of uh, surface chemistry and surface reaction. And to understand or to design that reaction, we use the two different theoretical approaches. One is the density functional theory, and then the second one is the Monte Carlo simulation. Basically, ALD reaction is composed of the chemical reaction and a physical reaction. So by using the DFT, we can uh, interpret the chemical interaction on a surface by using the DFT, or we can understand the physical interaction of precursor molecules on the surface by using MC simulation. Based on this knowledge, we apply our knowledge to the specific application, pretty much focused on the uh, silicon device fabrication process. And uh, we are working on the new material uh, deposition by ALD. And also we are working on the area selective diffusion. Also we are working on that layer modulation. And also separately, we are working on the hydrophobic city and isophobic city, but this is not ALD research, but so one of uh, Aravin, who is the, my postdoc scholar, and he's working on by using the solution and then the spin coating method for that. So we apply this knowledge for uh, the coating on the facility using the Antarctica uh, Research Institute. Okay, so let's move on to the first part of my talk. That is the, uh, the industrial ecosystem of the silicon chips. Okay, so great. I like the, uh, a lot of the person from the different countries like Korea, Brazil, Portuguese, India, Pakistan, and yeah, many, many countries, Nepal, good. Okay, so uh, let's start from here. So this is the uh, picture from almost the 40 and then 30 years ago. So we have a great, uh, the shortage for the gasoline gas uh, because of there are some different region for that. So the gasoline is actually, so one of the really important resource for uh, like maintaining the human's life. That was, that happens like in 1973, and that, that was the first oil crisis. And then the second one is actually 1979, which is the energy crisis. 
the reason for this the oil shortage was there are very complicated the political issue in the Middle East countries. So they stopped the oil export to the Western country, like for example, Europe or USA or Canada or some other countries. Because of that, the gasoline, like fossil fuel, that is the really important, the natural resources to keep the human's life, human's, uh, the high quality of the life. But that was the stop. So energy crisis in the Western world. Because of that, a lot of the Western country want to uh, keep controlling something in the Middle East country to keep that the, uh, they already, they trust the uh, power of oil. That is the uh, really important, the, the historical the event. So what happened in the semiconductor industry recently? So probably if you want to buy a car in the last two or three years, if you want to buy a laptop or smartphone, you probably remember you were in the waiting list for that line because we have a very similar shortage in last two or three years. Actually, so we call that shortage is global chip shortage. That was from 2020 still going on. The reason for the ch uh, chip shortage is the first reason actually the COVID-19 pandemic, the uh, factory worker and the facility workers cannot go back to their workplace. They cannot make their chip. So, and then the second thing is the US and China trade war still going on. And then cryptocurrency. So many persons want to mine want to mine their cryptocurrency to mine that cryptocurrency, they have to buy the more graphic card for the more computing power. So the producers, uh, while well, the companies keep producing their graphic chips and computer chips for their correct cryptocurrency, but the many persons want to buy that. So the other thing is the weather changing, global warming. So a lot of the fires and the flooding. So you remember there are flooding in the Texas, which is the uh, one of the center for the semiconductor chip facility. And then also the fire. And then recently the Russian Ukraine war, that is the another region for uh, the transportation. Because of that, we have a really long waiting line for car, but not very severe recently, but we, and we used to have very uh, not good the memory about uh, the waiting line for buying a car. And a desktop and a graphic, uh, graphic card, not car, graphic card, price increase. Also, probably you are not interested in that, but the video game console, also there are really long waiting line because we, the, all of the silicon industry couldn't make their chip very easily due to several reasons. So the thing, thing is, the oil is still very important, the natural resources for our life, but chip, silicon chip is also very important resources to keep our humans life. Think about this, chip in our life. So this is the uh, important invention for a human's life using the silicon chips. So this is the, uh, the first transistor, first radio, first integrated circuit, uh, the brown one TV, and a computer, a laptop, and then the internet broadcasting system, OTT, we can call the OTT. And then this is the Amazon web service. This is the first cloud, cloud service. So we can save our, all, all of the file in the cloud server, not in our physical desktop computer. And this is the first iPhone. And this is not the first smartphone, but the iPhone original opened the, the era of the smartphone. And then this is the, uh, the electric sports car, Tesla Model 1, te well, we, the name of this is Tesla Lodester. And then also we have a tablet piece. And then we have used the desktop and laptop and an iPad, we can use the tablet instead of that. In 2000, uh, uh, 11, so we have the voice, uh, the secretary like a, a Siri. 
So the other version of in the Google or the Samsung, but we have uh, this, uh, the AI, uh, the secretary. And also we have uh, Apple Watch. This is the very important gadget to keep monitoring your health condition, or you can use the other for the other purpose. And also we have a really great, the AirPod. And then I'm now using the AirPod. This is the really convenient. And also we have a great technology. That was the chat GPT. Some of the students can write down their reports automatically just by using this chat GPT. Also, this is the uh, augmented reality devices. The Vision Pro that was the real probably released in the next year. So all of the devices and then gadgets at least contain their silicon chip at least the one. And I think about that. So count how many chips do you have right now? I have a MacBook Air one chip, well a couple of the chips, and then I have an iPhone, I have an AirPod Pro, and then I have a like remote controller. I have a car. The many silicon chips are now using for your life. So the silicon chip is some kind of the natural resources like oil, fossil fuel right now. So uh, think about that. Uh, what's, uh, what's the, uh, the important, what's the, uh, the main, uh, the player for the silicon, uh, the chip e uh, industrial ecosystem. So that used to be composed of the three important parts. The first one is the integrated device manufacturer. We can call the IDM, Samsung Electronics, SK Hynix, Intel. They design their chip and then they fabricate their chip by themselves. And then fab equipment company, they fabricate the thin film diffusion tool or rethotopy tool, applied material, RAM research, ASML, TEL, many company, material chemical company, air liquid, Merck, SK Siltron, or DAO. They produce their chemicals for the material. So those the three different uh, the companies they are collaborated with each other to fabricate silicon chips. But right now, think about that. Twenty years ago, if you imagine chips, what you can think about like desktop. Desktop is only one application for the silicon chips. But right now, chips. Laptop, phone, tablet, watch, TV, car, refrigerator, earphone, cloud, and, and more. So because there are another business model, we can call the foundry business, foundry and the families. Apple does not have their silicon chip fabrication facility, but they design their chip. And then they fabricate their chip in the TSMC. TSMC only fabricate the chip for their customer, their client. Qualcomm is same, NVIDIA same. So this is a chip foundry company. They only fabricate their chip. And then family's chip company, they only design their chip and then fabricate it, place an order for the foundry company. This is the uh, another, uh, the business model. So the important thing is, so there are a lot of the demands to fabricate their chip by themselves. For example, the Google want to their want to fabricate their chip by them uh, uh, based on their design. But the this is the uh, great report uh, published from the Boston Consulting Group and then the semi semiconductor organization. So this is the se uh, semiconductor supply chain. The thing is equipment, material, and manufacturing. It's mainly taking place in the very localized area, which is the uh, East Asia and in China. All of the, all of the, uh, the silicon chip, most of the silicon chip is fabricated inside of Asia, not USA and uh, not Europe. So they recognize the importance of the silicon chip. If they lose their fabrication facility, something happened because the government reacts with this. The USA government, President Biden, they released the new Chips and Science Act to protect their science and their industry, silicon industry. They want to invite all of the fabrication facility inside uh, the USA. And then Samsung decided to build their new fabrication facility in the USA, also TSMC also. 
And the same in Europe, European Chip Act. They want to investigate it a lot. Of, uh, they want to spend the more money for the research, the silicon chip research, and that they want to keep building the research facility and a fabrication facility in their territory. So this is the uh, very important change recently. So think about that. I assume that all of most of the uh, attendees does not have the quite in-depth understanding of the nanofabrication, but this is the uh, very simple introduction of the nanofabrication. So but for the nanofabrication is composed of portal resist PR coating and a portal without a P and a deposition and an edge. So deposition means adding material and a portal without a P, they uh, transfer the pattern on the uh, thin film and an etching process re remove the unwanted area. So deposition adding material, defining pattern, etching, removal of material. We repeat this process and repeat and repeat, repeat again to fabricate these the tiny transistor and a tiny silicon devices. So this is the uh, very challenging. So let's, let's start from the uh, very old story. He's the really famous physicist and then he received the Nobel Prize, Professor Richard Feynman at Caltech. He gave a really nice famous talk there is a plenty of loops at the bottom. So that means we have a lot of chance if you decrease down to our material in the nanoscale, also we have a real physical different type of the energy at the bottom. So at that time, the Feynman and other uh, physicists, they already have the theory, but they don't know how they can make it, how they can realize it. So Feynman, the suggested the Feynman Prize to, uh, to initiate, to promote. A lot of the researchers want to keep researching the nanofabrication technology. So he suggested uh, the very tiny, the small size of motor fabrication, and then the write it down really small, the text on the pin head. And the first one being Mel Millan, he didn't use any new technology. He just making really tiny motor. He got the, the Feynman Prize. But the second one, Thomas Newman at Stanford University, he got the, uh, that, uh, the Feynman Prize because he used electron beam lithography, which is the uh, new technology for the nanofabrication. The thing is, always we have a theory first, but we do not have the fabrication method. The theory first and a fabrication later. So we have a lot of the design and we have a great idea, but we don't know how we can make it, how we can realize it. That's the same in the silicon device fabrication. Because so all of the all of the customer want to have the more like a faster speed device, faster speed MacBook Air and a larger capacity iPhone Pro or something like that. To keep that demands, we have to increase the number of the transistor because the transistor is the one of the uh, very basic component for the silicon chips. To increase the speed and to increase the capacity, storage capacity, we have to increase the number of transistor. But we have a very limited uh, the lateral size. So because of that, we have to reduce the transistor size. For example, so this is the uh, first, uh, the silicon trend is almost uh, seven years ago, same size. But right now, so this is the transistor, one transistor, 16 transistor, but almost 20 years ago, that is almost the 592 million transistor in the same lateral size. So to increase the, uh, the number of the transistor. Think about that. This is the uh, MacBook Air M2 chip. M2 chip is composed of the 20 billion not 20 million, 20 billion transistor with the five nanotechnology technology, like this side. M2 chip is very small, 20 billion transistor. So we have to fabricate this really tiny transistor inside the really tiny area. So to keep this performance, all of the device used to be two dimensional, but that is to change it three dimensional. For example, this is the transistor that was the planar devices, but right now it's almost going 
to be three dimensional, three D fin fat, and then multi multi gate uh, the transistor. Also the uh, NAND flash memory, which is the uh, the device for your USB storage or the solid state disk. And then that device already moved from the planar device to three dimensional NAND device. So we are already step into the three dimensional era. But to fabricate the three dimensional fabrication looks like that. So silicon vapor looks two dimensional and we deposit some thin film looks like a two dimensional. But the thing is we use the photolithography process. So think about that taking a picture that is the process from making three dimensional to two dimensional making three dimensional reality to the two dimensional picture. So that is the exactly opposite process to fabricate it. So we want to make the three dimensional structure, but we still use the photolithography technology. So there are a lot of the challenges and then the, uh, the difficulties and limitation. The current challenge is sailing, but three dimensional structure in the future. First one, so we have a lot of the uh, three dimensional structure. So we, we, it is really difficult to deposit some thin film inside this the three dimensional structure because of limited conformality. Second on photolithography, because we have to reduce down the device size, but the photolithography, the pattern size is strongly depends on the wavelength. So we use the very shorter wavelength light source for the photolithography, but still we have a wavelength limit. So etching, etching is a really unisotropic etching reaction. But right now we need to have the additional, make additional pattern inside the three dimensional structure. It is not can be made by the conventional etching, the technology. So that's the, a lot of the trouble and then try to make it. But a lot, there are a lot of the customer to buy the new silicon chips. So we have to keep researching and keep developing this process. Let's move on to the other, the, the second part of my talk, atomic layer diffusion. So atomic layer diffusion is the thin film diffusion method. And then that is the typically performed in the vacuum environment. And then the surface is exposed to the precursor. And then this is the uh, ALD process for the titanium oxide. We use the titanium TiCl4 and then water. And then our surface is sequentially exposed to TiCl4 and then water. And then that reacts only uh, those two molecules that reacts only on the surface. And Ti, TiCl4 absorb on the surface and water oxidize the TiCl4 to form the TiO2. And then we repeat this process uh, the multiple times to get the uh, desired thickness of the TiO2 film. Because of this ALD reaction is surface, uh, surface only surface reaction. So we can have an excellent conformality. And then this is the uh, one, two, three, four step. One cycle is composed of the four steps. So uh, we can very easily control the thickness by controlling number of ALD cycle. And also have, we have a great large area uniformity by using the ALD process. So one of the very unique uh, gross behavior of the ALD is surface self-saturated reaction. So the surface is exposed to the precursor and a counter reactant. Once surface is, surface is saturated, covered by the precursor, there is a no additional precursor in the second layer. So this is the surface self-saturated reaction. You can just think about, this is the Korean snack, but you can just think about this, the sticky mat for the clean room. Once the sticky mat is covered by the dust, there is the no sticky prop property. One layer of the dust is quite maximum. So this is the uh, very surface, uh, very unique uh, gross mechanism of the ALD process. So compared to the other thin film diffusion process, PVD, for example, sputtering, CVD, or ALD, and all of the, the, the property and then ALD has a great advantage uh, compared to the PVD and the CVD, except one disadvantage, gross rate. TBD is super fast, CVD is middle, moderate, ALD is was super slow. But that was the uh, old story because this is, I like this example. 
So the USA, uh, USA already uh, researched the shale gas, how they can the, extract the oil from the sand and the rocks. But almost the 20 and 30 years ago, they already finished all of the research. But the, the was the price. At that time, the oil price was not very expensive. They cannot use their new technology. But right now, oil price is increased a lot. So they can use their technology. They can extract a lot of the oil from their sand and then their rocks. That is the shale gas. So the situation was changing in the silicon chip. Silicon size of silicon chip is decreased a lot. 20 years ago, thickness was like uh, 100 nanometer. They had to deposit 100 nanometer. But by decreasing the, num uh, the size of silicon devices, we just need to deposit one nanometer of the thin, uh, the, the thin film. So right now, if you have the ALD process 20 years ago, you have to spend like a two hour, 40 minutes to deposit 100 nanometer. But right now, one minute, 30 seconds. So all of the uh, deposit technology, is tr it's move on to the ALD technology because that was not slow anymore. That is not very slow anymore. So because of that, ALD became a major, major thin film diffusion method for the silicon device fabrication. So that was the first uh, commercialized ALD process for the transistor that was adopted in the Intel 2007. They utilized ALD to deposit the high K material, hafnium oxide. Right now, this is the cross-section image of the NAND, NAND devices, all of the white, uh, the contrast is the tungsten plug. All of the interconnect is deposited by the tungsten ALD. Also, they used ALD tantalium nitride and ruthenium for the copper interconnect. They used tantalium nitride for the seed and the barrier layer for the copper dual damascene process. This is the uh, commercialized ALD process. Also, the Samsung and the TSMC already announced they are transiting to the gate all around the uh, field effect transistor. This is the uh, channel, and then the channel is surrounded by the gate. Looks like this is the uh, three-dimensional, uh, this is the cross-section image of the transistor. So think about that, because the PVD and CVD do not have the quite enough conformity only ALD can be used to deposit something this complicated structure. So the ALD, after that, ALD is now trying to uh, expand their technology to the other patterning technology because photolithography has a lot of the trouble because we use the VW light and a UV, we use the DUV, and then we are moving to the EUV, extreme UV, like a shorter wavelength light source because the light source wavelengths determines the minimum feature size of our silicon devices. But well, we have a lot of the limits, but they don't want to adopt the really new technology because the silicon device fabrication process is composed of the really complicated process. They don't want to change a lot because they don't want to screw it up. So they recycle, reuse, they reinvent their technology just by using very well-known technology. So they already use ALD process. They want to utilize, reuse the ALD to overcome this challenge. This is the one example, wavelengths determine technology because the photolithography, all of the pattern size is, is determined by the wavelength, but they developed the new technology, double patterning process. They have the PL, on here, just by using photolithography, we can deposit very thin film on PL pattern. And we etch it out top and bottom, and we can have this spacer. And we can easily remove this PL just by uh, putting to the organic solvent, like for example, acetone. So we have a spacer. And then just by using this spacer as a etching mask, we can transfer the pattern uh, from the top to the bottom. So in this process, the pattern size is determined by thickness of the thin film. 
So this is the PL and a silicon oxide ALD deposited by PALD. Because the PL is organic material, so we have to reduce the deposition temperature. Because of that, they utilize the plasma in as ALD, which can which can able to deposit silicon oxide at 50 degrees C. That is the very low temp deposition temperature. And then there are, this is the conventional lithotherapy, it's only composed of the photolithography process. So this is the cell pulse double pattern technology. We use the PL pattern deposit ALD material, and then remove the PL, transfer the spacer to the bottom. And also we repeat this process. We have a first spacer and a deposit again, and remove the first spacer and I transfer the second spacer to the bottom. Just by using quadruple patterning technology, we can increase the density of this pattern more, two times more. So thickness uniform, density uniformity, the ALD is the best thin pigment deposition method for this double patterning technology. And then also because uh, I already explained ALD has a great advantage, excellent conformability, thickness control, larger uniformity. The one, one important advantage is surface dependent growth. ALD can grow only on specific surface because that starting from the surface chemical reaction. If the surface species are different, it's a different. The growth can be taking place or growth cannot be taking place based on the uh, surface species. So this is the uh, my research results performed when I was the postdoc. I deposited the platinum film on graphene. I found the platinum only from the grain boundary of the graphene because the grain boundary is kind of the defect of the graphene. It's the different chemical reactivity and different surface energy. So ALD can grow the film just by uh, this amount, very small amount of the surface energy difference. So the concept of air is active ALD. Once you have the, this the original pre-pattern, and then we passivated one layer just by using inhibitor and then we perform the ALD. So we can deposit some film on the selectively. So to control, to passivate the surface, that was a monolayer used to be for that. But right now there are a lot of the different types of the molecule to inhibit the surface. So just by using selective deposition, we don't need to etch it out and then we can transfer our pattern to the upper side. And this is the uh, the first paper, and then they used ODTS, octadecyl trichloroxylene. Uh, no ODTS surface hafnium oxide was successfully grown, but ODTS Cori surface there is a no OD, uh, hafnium oxide film was grown. So what's the benefit of the air selective ALD? So this is the uh, typical uh, nanofabrication process: pattern preparation, thin film deposition, photoresist coating, phototherapy and an etched out PR strip, six step. But if you have a selective that version, you can skip this four step. Pattern going to additional pattern. So the one of the advantage of that, because as I explained, nanofabrication is super duper complicated. So if you simplify the, your process, you can prevent unwanted, unwanted error or unwanted the side reaction. So this is the, a lot of the unwanted side reaction. Simplification of the process, that is the really important for the silicon industry. The second one, so we can make the second and third order three-dimensional pattern formation. For example, if you have a, this pre-pattern, and you can directly deposit to some selectively grown on this three-dimensional pattern. Also, if you have a, this pattern, this is the real pattern for NAND flash memory devices. You can selectively deposit inside this three-dimensional pattern. It cannot be achieved by conventional pattern technology. So there are really important killer applications for the silicon uh, air selective deposition for silicon G fabrication. So this is the very simplified cartoon for the copper interconnect. So this yellow part is copper interconnect, and then the blue is silicon oxide insulator. So this is the perfect align to connect the top and bottom, but due to the physical limitation, we cannot make the perfect alignment. So because of that, there are parasitic capacitance between this line and this line. 
if you can selectively deposit on this uh, oxide insulator, so we can increase, we can increase the distance between this plug and uh, this line. So we can call this is the uh, edge placement error issue, and then we can overcome this issue just by using dielectric. So this is the uh, real TM image uh, announced by, reported by the TSMC and the IDM uh, 2021. Also, there are interesting reverse reaction of ALD. ALD is deposition, but uh, from the Professor Steve George at uh, University of Colorado, he used a very special chemical reaction. And he can etch it out one single layer by single layer. Aluminum oxide convert to aluminum fluoride and a tin egg, egg he removed the aluminum fluoride. He repeat this process, remove one by one. If you use this atomic layer etching process, we have a very interesting approach. Like for example, you can try to deposit some selective film, but in some point, selectively grown pattern, but some point there are unwanted growth or non gross area. So if you have the atomic layer etching, you can remove it. But more than that, if you have this three dimensional pattern, so you can deposit something right on here and etch it out, deposit, etch it out, deposit, etch it out. So you can extend your pre pattern to more just by combining a selective diffusion and a selective etching. That is the uh, important technology. This is the last part of the last example of the ALD, uh, the application, photoresist. As I explained, the photoresist, the pattern size, it strongly depends on the wavelength of uh, light source using the photoresist. So this is the minimum feature size. It depends on the wavelength. So we used to use the DUV, deep UV. We are now moving to EUV, extreme UV, very short wavelength. So for the photoresist technology, we use the photoresist, which is the polymer layer. And that is the deposit by spin coating because the polymer PL is the liquid solution and then coated on the silicon wafer and then spinning up. And then we can make the uh, micrometer size, micrometer thickness of the PL layer. But the problem is if you use the EUV, so the number of poron is decrease a lot, one to uh, one over like 14. So because of that, after making a pattern, we have a very uh, significant issue on the roughness because the number of the portal was the reduced a lot. So very interesting approach was the released a few years ago from the lab research and IMAG and ASML. And then they trying to deposit TL just by using ALD, not the polymer spin coating method. So if you they use the polymer layer, so it is a very non-uniform, but if you they use the inorganic thin film for the portal resist, they can have a very uniform absorption. And also if they use the wet solvent for the developing process, so there are the pattern collapse, but if they use the dry developing process, there is no pattern collapse. Also, if they use the wet, Instead of the wet, and then if they use the dry PL, dry portal resist process, this is the uh, very eco-friendly process. This is the uh, another very interesting the application of the ALD process. Okay, let's summarize my talk. Uh, it's already going to be the 640. So oil, steel is a very important natural resource for the human's life, but now, Chips is also very important. Silicon chip is very important. And also the fabrication is getting important. ALD process is the thin film diffusion uh, method used for the silicon fabrication technology. But that technology is expanded to the other technology, patterning and an etching process, multi-patterning, selective diffusion, atomic layer etching, and then dry portal resist. So this is acknowledgement. And then I, my group recently got the, uh, the new, new group photo uh, one year, uh, one week ago, that was the uh, recently very famous in South Korea. And then four frame photo. 
I like the uh, this portal. And I also, as I mentioned in the introduction, so this all of the slides was the build based on the my recent editorial, the era of atomic crafting, the atomic layer diffusion beyond the thin film diffusion technology, and then border risk collaboration is mature chemistry for the industry ecosystem with silicon a semiconductor industry. So if you are interested, I recommend you need to read this editorial and a review. And also, if you are interested in the, what ALE is, if you want to study more, you can go to my YouTube channel. I uploaded the seven chapter in English uh, ALE class. Okay, thank you.